Okay guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This is the Procon Geek and this is going to be video or episode 2 of the Procon tutorials for beginners in English and in today's video we need to cover the calc pad and setting your user preferences and just introducing you to some of the analysis and design modules that are in Procon before we delve deeper with the series. So without wasting too much time, let's just get right into the video. Okay. So like I told you in the introduction, today we're going to be looking at what is the cockpit, just looking at some of the bits and pieces of what the user interface is made up of and we also look at setting the user preferences, whether you need to change them or you need to leave them as they are. So the first thing you need to understand as we did in the previous video, this is the first thing that pops up whenever you click on the Procon icon on your desktop and you're greeted with what we call the Procon Calcpad. So what are the features of the Procon Calcpad? As I told you, you have the Procon button where you can open a new project, uh, open, uh, create a new project rather, open any existing project, change the page setup, exit the program and also see the Procon options, right? Then you also have the Home tab which has to deal with the calc sheet. So to better view what the Home tab or what happens when you have an active project, all you have to do is go to the home button or the Procon settings button then what you're going to do is you're going to click on new and as you can see what you have generated is what we call the calc sheet so this is called the calculation pad if you can uh, think of uh, an engineer out there site you have what we call those clipboards so the Procon calc pad is a sort of a clipboard where you clip a number of pages or a number of projects right so a project could be a worksheet which has so many pages joined together that you can clip on a clipboard and you can start doing your project right so as you can see everything has changed now everything is open there you can even insert if you want to insert the date there you go the date is inserted if you want to insert a picture it's all up to you you can always insert in this case let me see i think i might have a picture that we could use uh let's just go with powerpoint and we're just going to go with this Procon gig frames so we don't have any bitmaps you can change the type of folder that you want in this case we want to insert a jpeg just open that and as you can see the image has been inserted right you can move it around you can even change the size of that image if you want right so obviously you're not going to be putting images of yourself or uh, in this case this is me right you're not going to be putting images of yourself you might probably be putting an image of a building or an illustration that you would have made in AutoCAD of a slab or anything that you want anyone right when they make uh, or open or view your project to have a reference that whenever the calculation then they can reference to the image that you have above so just remember you can put a lot of things you can even add a drawing add some symbols add an equation right what is this new equation what are the values you're going to put what are the settings everything you can play around with it and we're going to play around with this much later on but just remember the program calc sheet is not the best or the best thing that we would want to get started with so i'm just going to delete this because we don't need it Right, we are going to be looking at the analysis and design modules because these are more important than the calculation sheet. But I just wanted to show you what the calculation sheet is and what some of these buttons do once they are active. Now, you can also even edit the header for this case. What we're going to do just for illustration purposes, there you can edit the header. Let's say in this case you want your sheet number to start off at one, then you want the job number to be it's 2020, and the month is june and today is 18 so you can say this is going to be a job number then the job title i'm just going to call this tutorial tutorial one right then the client the client is going to be the program geek right or anyone or the subscriber then the calculations are going to be by the procon right and they're going to be checked by the geek and if you want the date, if you want to insert today's date, all you have to do is just click the set date and there you see the date is there. And once you click OK, then you go to the top, you see your header has changed. Now, by default, your Procon will have a page that says Procon. I edited mine to change so that there's no logo that comes up. I'll show you how to edit that much later on. But this is what I just wanted to show you. Get it started with the calc sheets and that you understand what does the home tab do and what happens when these buttons are now active so i think we have covered that the next thing we need to look at are your user preferences or and the analysis and design modules okay like i said it we need to look at setting the user preferences so this is quite easy all you have to do is go to your program button click on it and if you go down you have two buttons which says procon options and switch style 
So the first thing that we need to understand is what is switch style. So this allows you to switch whether you want night mode, what they call it dark mode and light mode, right? So currently we have this gray setup, which is the light mode. And if you want to switch style to have that dark gray or dark or black setup, you can always switch style, click on this button. So I am not going to click on it because usually once you do it in demo mode, and this is program 3.1, when you click switch style, it will crash, but you can play around with it on your own and you will see what happens and you can choose what type of style you want program to be in. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to program options, click on it. And there you go. This you're greeted with this pop up window where you can do a host of things. So I'm just going to move it there and we can play around it and I'm going to leave it minimized so you can see that where we are, we are still in program and there is a little window. Now, the first thing we need to understand is the number of tabs that just popped up. So as you can see, there are four tabs. There's the general tab, the working folder, the preferences, and the euro code. So the general tab allows you to set the general settings of your program. So of most important that will be for you is the backup interval for timed backups. So this allows Procon to backup all your design files at a given interval. So as you will see, the, low, the minimum is 2, then you have 5, 15, and 60. I prefer 2 because normally, even though when you're working with folders, you want to control S to save your document, you may forget. So just keep it at 2, right? Run 64-bit modules when available. So Procon knows there's still people who use 32-bit windows. Personally, I don't know why you would be using a 32-bit machine. Um... It's not about the motherboard. Yes, in some machines, it could have been about the motherboard, but most laptops now, they support 64-bit uh, processing and 64-bit machine processing and languages as well. So all you have to do is make sure that you install Windows in 64-bit and not 32-bit, and you'll be able to run 64-bit modules. So I'll tell you the other thing. 64-bit modules as well are very good, although 32-bit may be more stable. But the good thing is whenever you have a 64-bit machine, you can run 32-bit modules as well. But what it just says is that it will prefer running 64-bit before it runs 32-bit modules. So whenever a 64-bit module is available, it will run it first instead of running a 32-bit module. You will find this quite helpful, especially when it comes to Sumo. If you try running Sumo 32-bit on a 64-bit machine, you really have problems. So this is the general tab and we've talked about it. The next thing we need to do is walk to the working folder tab. So the working folder tab is quite easy all you have to do is click on the working folder so what this does is it allows you to create to set to set let me just say set set the working folder what this means is you will be able to create a folder where everything will be saved to this is what you're just basically telling program is okay program every time i open or do a design i want you to save my designs to this particular folder all right so what you're doing is program Think of it as a robot, right? And it's at your desk and you have a file cabinet. So what you're telling it is, okay, program, every time that I give you a piece of paper, I want you to go to cabinet three and open drawer number three and put the files there. So what program will do is that every time you do a design or create a file, it will always go to cabinet three, open drawer three and put your file there. It will never go to cabinet two and draw one and put a file there unless you then come back and rechange your working folder so what we're going to do i'm going to go to the desktop then create a new folder in this case what i'm going to call it is i'm going to say procon right procon working folder one or just yeah let's call it folder one click on okay oh there's a problem could not create the path so what we're going to do uh let's go there go to the desktop and create a new folder this is the path where you want to create it then create a backslash and what you're going to do is procon let's just put it out as a procon click ok and as you can see a new folder has been created that is called procon and once you just click on it it's now highlighted and you click ok your working folder has changed and how do you see if your working folder has changed just go to the bottom of your screen and see it now says my working folder is c uses t44 o that is terminator for you desktop and procon now the working folder we're going to be using is the procon folder which is on my desktop and that is now the working folder so let's go back and see the other options now the next thing that you have is the preferences tab right 
So this is where you are able to set the user preferences that you want, right? For example, it has the general preferences, right? Concrete design, steel design, connections, and edit board properties. This is where you can edit the board properties and also has one for world settings. So preferably, the first thing that I want to tell you is you can change it to whatever you want. For example, codes of practice that you would want to use when designing for concrete. So there's a host or a list of them from the ACI, which is the American Concrete Institute, the BS, the British Standard Codes, CP, which is the Code of Practice, Eurocode, and the Hong Kong Concrete Code, Indian Standards, New Zealand, and South African Board of Standards 0100-2000. So in this space, what I'll tell you is just for now, leave everything as it is. If we want to change it, we'll change it later. We can even change it when we are in the design and analysis module that we want. So you don't even have to worry about. Same thing. If you want, you can change the units that you're going to be using. Are you going to be using Imperial or metric? If you're going to be using Imperial, it'll be good to change everything to the American Concrete Institute because that is what you would be using, right? But if you're going to be using anything that's not America, because Americans are the only ones who are different, you're going to be using metrics, so we're going to stick it to metric. Now, for concrete design, you can even choose what the default steel bar will be. This means every time you start a new module, your number will always default to this. In this case, we're just going to change this to 460, right? Mild steel bars, these are R type bars. Which one do you want? You can change to 225 and 300. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that it does change. So I'm just going to say how you still, we're going to put 225, how you bar designation is going to be a Y. So this will automatically tell program every time you type Y12, you are saying that it's going to be a high yield still. If you want to type R12 and it's going to be mild, you still. So if you want to mess around or change it for anyone, you can always do it, right? And make it to a T and if you want, make it a hash and everything. But we're just going to stick with default because Y is much better. Then the maximum bar diameter that you would want to use in this case it's always going to be 40 but if you want to change it down to something smaller you can always do that right and the fcu when designing beams and slabs you can change it here for columns you can change it here bases you can change it but what i'm going to do is just leave it like it is and design it in that way same applies you can change the yield strength for your steel and for tensile strength right there's a difference between yield strength and tensile strength we'll talk about that much later on same applies for bolt. You can edit the bolt properties if you want, right? With the, and whether you want the shear analysis to be non-linear or if you want it to be linear, right? Everything you can edit there. But one thing I'll tell you is let's leave everything as it is for now and skip it as it is. Now, the last tab we're going to talk about is the Eurocode tab before we look at the analysis and design modules. So, in the case where you want to change anything that has to do with the Eurocode, right all you have to do is click on it and sometimes it'll be slow it'll tell you it's not responding because it's um it's a bit of a leggy problem so what we're going to do is we're going to wait for it to start up as it goes but if it takes too long we're just going to pause and then just start once it's open okay so once you click on eurocode this is the tab that you'll be open to so here is where you can change all the settings that you want with regards to Eurocode, right? You can add a country that you want, save the changes, remove anything that you want to do, play around with it. You can do it. When it comes to Eurocode for the loading, it tells you the recommended values that you should use, whatever for QK, QC. This is to be done in conjunction with the actual Eurocode. So you need to know the code before you change anything there. Personally, I don't use the euro code when I'm designing, so we're not going to be using this because we're not in Europe, right? We're in the motherland of Africa, so we're going to be using this one. But even if you're not in Africa, man, uh, we're going to be using the same principles that we told you how to use and design this. But we're going to be using BS, or even if you're in the States, wherever you are, we're going to be changing this to suit. You can change it. Just know you can change it to suit whatever you want. If you want a detailed video how to change everything for the euro code i'll do that separately but for now we're going to be using the metric and we're going to stick to that so this is it for episode two i know we wanted to talk about the analysis and design modules but we don't want to make the video too long so what we're going to do is we're going to end this video at this point and then we're going to talk about the different analysis and design modules which you find in program so thank you very much for tuning in this is your first time please subscribe like the video leave a comment and see you in episode three